Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barre inclinada schedule. Нашите предавания предлагат много езици. Моля вижте suprememastertv.com на клона черта schedule. All kind of thing that happened because we have the bodies. Yes. It's nothing really good for meditation and practitioners who wish to find the truth. Yeah. Only the people with great wisdom would really understand that, that the body is really a source of our trouble. Mm. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Alaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Tonkasugit means welcome in Inuktitut, the traditional language of the Inuit people of Canada. My name is Adelotok. The spiritually oriented people of Nunat Silvert praise your patience and perseverance, which have a magical effect on those around you. Nunat Silvert is an autonomous area in the extreme north of Newfoundland and the Labrador province in Canada. Its name translates to our beautiful land in the Inuktitut language. Established in 2005, the Nunat Silvert government is the first of its kind in Canada to enjoy self-governance by the indigenous Inuit people. The Nunat Silvert Cultural Center opened in 2019 with the mission of preserving the language history and the culture of the region's people. The center's architecture is creatively modeled after an Inuit Ilusuik or sad house. Community-based activities include traditional performances like drum dancing, which has been a part of Inuit life for centuries, as well as friendly competitions of throat singing for women. <coughs> <laughs> the ancient Torngat Mountains are among the most impressive natural wonders of this area. Torngat means the place of spirits in Inuktitut, and the Inuit people living in these mountain ranges had their own religion and spiritual beliefs. With rocks that are billions of years old, the mountains rise in spectacular steep cliffs that descend to form deep fjords. Polar bears swim in the flowing waters, and the caribou traverse the land. On December 1, 2005, the Trongat Mountains National Park was created, symbolizing a gift from the Inuit people to the country of Canada and her people. The park also serves as a protected area for wildlife. The hospitable Inuit people welcome travelers to explore this dramatic natural landscape that is also their homeland. It is a delight to briefly introduce you to culturally rich Nunat Siavut in chanting viewers. We wish you unconditional love and heavenly glory.
For decades, Supreme Master Ching Hai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters, such as the worshipped world honored one Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped Son of God Jesus Christ, the venerated master and the philosopher Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, the venerated master and the philosopher Lao Tzu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on earth. An extraordinary living example of compassion, she lovingly and regularly sends material and financial assistance to refugees, the homeless natural disaster victims, and others needing relief. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness. Wishing you the best. Supreme Master Ching Hai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media, governments, individuals, and many awards such as the 2006 Gushi Peace Prize, considered Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavir Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Ching Hai Day, an honorary citizen of the United States, etc and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for her outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds.
etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness. Wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Ching Hai promotes the peaceful, loving, plant-based diet and envisions, with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life. A tranquil and glorious all-vegan world where animals and people live in respectful harmony. Her initiatives included alternative living flyer distribution, the international vegan restaurants, loving hut, vegan food companies, vegan fur products, Supreme Master Television, as well as writing and speaking to influential government and media leaders, participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we are aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations, while saving our planet from climate change and disasters. Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled worldwide and held discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today, we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Buddhist Stories, The Better Wife, Part 404, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English, on August 12, 2015, in France. though we love each other so much, but even lovers, they also make trouble for each other, you know, attachment and worry about each other, jealousy, all kind of thing that happen because we have the bodies. Yes. It's nothing really good for meditation and practitioners who wish to find the truth. Yeah. Only the people with great wisdom would really understand that, that the body is really a source of our trouble. Mm. After the Buddha said this, she suddenly uh, opened more of her uh, spiritual power and then rise up her spiritual level. Uh, anaham, that's a high, very high one. Almost like, almost like Arahat, you know? Yeah. And then she was very happy. And she prostrate to the Buddha, thank you, thank you, yeah. But I ask you, I request four things from um, World Honor One. Number one, please let me offer uh, medicine and all, and all the food according, accordingly when any of the bichu are sick, yes. Number two, when the bichu need to see doctor, I offer to pay for that. Yes. Number three, any bichu that came far from far away, please let me offer them meal and thing first. They're tired, thirsty, you know. That's why when you come here, you have meals already on the table and drink. Still have, right? Yes. I told them always have food and drink on the table, because people come different timing, you know. Yeah. Or some people has not eat enough at. Breakfast, because morning too early, don't want, and later want to eat a little bit more, then always have something for them. And it's like that? Yes. yes, yes. It's not like we greedy and want to eat a lot. It's just something to calm the stomach. Sometimes it's too empty, it, it, it's sour, it makes trouble, right? You have pain, so just something, right? Okay. 
Are you okay there? <laughs> you can stretch your legs. You look like suffering. <laughs> okay. And number four, any bichu who are going away, far away, may I offer, you know, like a club sandwich? <laughs> uh, Huh? A pack, a pack. Yeah, no, not just yeah, like a lunch box, lunch box, <laughs> lunch boxes. Okay. So, um, praise be the Buddha. Uh, when the sangha, when any monks have a sick, and then, and then, uh, if don't have good medicine and uh, appropriate food, then the sickness will not heal so quick. Yes. And also maybe difficult to recover. Yeah. And because of that they will die. Yes. And uh, Oh, she says she want to yes, yeah, she want to offer for the doctors of the Sangha, you know. She say that's the first reason why she want to offer medicine for the monks and food. Yeah. And these uh, the doctors, yeah, we say the doctor monks because they need to take care of the patients, monks. So they have no time to go out to bake themselves. Therefore, I want to offer to them. Mm. And the monks from far away who came here, they do not know anyone yet. They cannot uh, know, they will not know where to bake and maybe some dogs, you know, bad dog bite them and all that, or maybe uh, bad people will hurt them, or maybe uh, uh, scolding them, you know, degrading them. So that's why I want to offer to them first, yeah. until maybe until they know where to go, huh? And then acquaint themselves with the road. I told you that's why. If you offer, you have to put yourself in their position. This woman, she's so wise. She knows everything, yeah. So she don't just say, I offer everybody the same. No, no. She categorizes it and she knows why. My God, such a beautiful woman. And some die like that. It's terrible. I, it's not fair, is it? Yeah. Yesterday you told me it's not fair, truly not. But this is all common. Huh? Maybe the Buddha will explain later. Yeah, there's a lot of pages here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably we were explain a lot here. Okay. And the Pichu, who has to travel far away from here, you know, if they don't have like a lunchbox to take with them, then maybe they cannot back on the way because you never know where the houses are. Sometimes no houses. And then the road may be a danger road, maybe uh, a lot of uh, poisonous uh, animals. Yeah. And then if they have to go, please uh, also dispatch somebody to go with them. So they have friends. It's better than go alone. It's too dangerous. Yeah. Therefore, I want to offer them something to take with them, yeah, so they have together and go, yeah. The, the Buddha heard all that, praised her. Oh, excellent, excellent, precious, precious. Your heart is so good like that. It's a very great merit, yes. It is as if you make offering to the Buddha, yeah. You know, for the Sangha, is as if to the Buddha. I mean, the merit is as big, yes. And then the Buddha and the monk left. After that, she asked someone to open the, the coffin to see what the king reward her. And then, you know, 30, 30 uh, head of her sons. Imagine, it's you. Imagine if it's your son. But he has, she has already been <laughs> taught by the Buddha before that, and he opened her wisdom eye already, and her, her heart was so really understood that life, body is impermanent. Therefore, she doesn't feel attached to anything. She was not crying. And he, she would just think briefly, ah, what a pity. How sorrowful. If you're born, you're about to die one day. And, uh, you know, transmigration, 
in all different ways of uh, life. How come life is so, so much suffering? That's all she said. At that time, all the family yeah, heard that uh, all the families of the wives of these thirty sons heard that their son-in-law were killed by the king as third. They said to themselves, there, is, there was no reason why the king killed innocent people. And then they were very angry. All of them brought their own um, their, their army and then uh, surrounding the king's palace, one to revenge. And the, the, the king Bhattinat, run, run to the Buddha now. Uh, and then they also run after him. And then they also cover the garden of uh, the Buddha, the Kiwang uh, garden. And then at that time, I, mean Anan, go out and invited them in to ask why they're doing like that, why they're surrounding the garden of the Buddha. Yeah, and run after the king. So 32, how come this is 32 and that one only 30? Yes. Probably, huh? 30 only, right? Yes. And 32 uh, whipped and 32 uh, the, the father-in-law. It's funny, maybe some wrong typing. Uh, okay, never mind. Here, 32, 32 father-in-law of the sons of the Sali lady come in and bow to the Buddha and then stand on one side. The Anand kneel in front of the Buddha and ask, Praise be the world honor one. Thirty-two sons of the Tisali, Tisali lady, what did they do in the former life so uh, violently or not? How come the king killed all of them in this lifetime? Please tell us. So the king, uh, the Buddha said, "Oh, this is a karmic story. It's a long, long time ago. It started. At that time, there were thirty-two. Then it is thirty-two. Then yes. At that time, there was there were thirty-two friends, very close friends. They are buddy buddies." Mm. One time, they went out and stole a buffalo and came out, killed it, and eat together. Yeah, a party. Near there, there was a, a very old and poor woman, has no son, no, no, no child. So these, these 32 persons brought the buffalo there and asked her to kill for them, to make a party. So, okay, oh no, no, they brought it there to, to kill the, the buffalo in the house of that old lady, yeah. So he, he, she let them, you know, use, their, use her, her yard to do it, okay, fine. And then in her house has, uh, has enough, you know, everything, wood and pan and pot, yeah, everything she lent to them. Before they are going to kill the buffalo, the buffalo kneel down on the floor and say to them, please, please let me live. Please don't kill me. Because if you kill me now, in the future life, I will not let you live. Even up to the day that you became Buddha, I will, I will definitely revenge on this. The, all of them heard the, the, the buffalo begging like that, but they don't care. Uh, they push the, the buffalo down and kill it, and then fry and cook and everything and eat all together. And at that time, the old lady also has some food because he's, she's poor normally, she doesn't have meat. Yeah. 
And then Anan, you should know, the buffalo at that time is the King Bartenak right now. And the people who stole the buffalo and killed to eat, they are 32 sons of the Sale lady. Because of that karma, so over 500 years, often being killed by this, uh, you know, king, you know, in former life even, yes. Not finished up to today, yeah. The old lady, because she was very glad to help to kill this buffalo and eat it as well. So 500 lifetimes, she must, she must be the mother of these 32 sons, and always she has to witness them killed in this way, more or less. After hearing all this story of both sides, Anan asked the Buddha again, Praise be, world honored one. But then, what kind of merit did these people do in order to be born in the, you know, noble and rich family and very powerful body like this? Please tell us. So the Buddha said, Anan, you should know. It's also another long time, <laughs> long, 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 long time ago. At the time of the Buddha Kashipa, there was one woman, old woman, a very respectful to the Buddha Sangha and teaching. Her family very rich, yeah, very rich house. One time she took out a lot of incense and cream and to mix with some colors so that she can repair one of the Buddha's stupas. Yeah. Halfway there, she saw 32 young men. So, by the way, she said, where are you going? I have something very meritorious. I am going to repair, to paint the Buddha's stupas. If you help me, then life after life, you will be very strong. Powerful and muscular, yeah. Oh, really? Really? Okay, okay, we come with you. Mm. Then after painting the old stupa for the Buddha, they say, because of your advice, uh, we have some meritorious um, action today. We want to use that merit for what? To our future life, so that wherever we were born in the future life, we'll be rich and, you know, famous and powerful, etc. stuff. Yeah. And the old lady said, yeah, of course, of course, of course. The three jewels will make your wish come true. Hmm. Anan, you should know. The, uh, the old woman at that time is the Sali lady, the mother, and the 32 now they say 30. It's not fair. <laughs> uh, 30. <laughs> 30 son. Now that's, you know, at that time became her son. At that time, all the uh, shoulders and general surrounding Buddha's forest, after her or that, they say, they also realize this is all karmic retribution. So suddenly their anger, their hatred, gone. Yeah. And then they all came in front of the King Bartinak and say sorry, and apologize to the king. At that time, the Buddha, uh, because of that, you know, he preached more things about people, more expounded deeper about how to be good to do good things, yeah. and anything that violent and bad you should cut off from your life, yeah. And told them the Four Noble Truth as well. So everybody happy, happy, and become friends, and went home. End the story. We should really thank 
the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who had take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. My God, I was thinking something nice, and then always a Buddha story, always something. <laughs> if not chop chop, then it chop chop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right then, huh? All my dear ones, I let you meditate. We meditate together for a while, and then. See how it goes, okay, huh? Wise viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled Buddhist Stories, The Better Wife, Part 404, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Selection from the Sutra of Complete Enlightenment, Chapters 1 through 2, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May divine love be with you every day and bring you endless joy. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.